today's lesson we're going to take a look at functions uh, acting as if they were input output generators or sometimes we just call them function machines um, you recall that a relation uh, is just a set of ordered pairs and uh, we've already looked at finding out if those uh, relations are a function and uh, basically we we also looked at the fact that ordered pairs are comprised of x's and y's and uh, they're written you know just like this uh, two three uh, or uh, you know the x always comes before the y so there's the examples right there um, then we started taking a look at the fact that the domain is a list of all the x's and uh, so we could almost use that as interchangeably for the x uh, the name of an x right there and y um, could be switched over and called range kind of as like a, a different nickname well today i'm going to teach you two more nicknames um, the x or domain can also be known as input and the y and range can be known as output and uh, if somebody's like, why, I, I just, I don't understand. Well, um, let's, let's just look at it this way. It's very possible um, that you've got a nickname. My son, I, I call John. But you know what? When he was born on his birth certificate, we put on there Jonathan. Very rarely do I ever call him Jonathan. John is just one syllable. It's short. And when he was younger, sometimes I would call him Johnny. So um, there's three names for him. It all means the same thing. Um, it kind of depends on what situation uh, that you would use it. And that's exactly what's happening here. If we're talking about uh, an input-output type situation, we're absolutely going to be using input and outputs. And that's what we're going to be using today almost exclusively. Um, if we're saying, would you please list the domain and range, then we're not going to use input and output, we're going to use domain and range. And if we're talking about um, exact values in an equation, uh, and, and we were given x's and y's, well, obviously we would just give what we were given. So it's it's kind of, um, take a look at the, the situation that you're in, and let that determine what you're going to use. But please understand, um, for the most part, you can use these terms interchangeably. Now, let's take a look at this idea of the function as an input output generator you could input any number and then it has to follow the rule every time um, for our function notation we had it set up as an equation today um, I, I don't have it set up as an equation because i just want you to see what the rule is and, and here in the middle of this generator machine that i've built here it says rule add seven to every x value so I've chosen three random numbers. Uh, here's 22, it's my first input. And when I slide it through the machine, we added seven to it and 22 suddenly became 29. Okay, so uh, let's put five through. Now, if we add seven to five, it should make it 12. So let's slide it through the machine. It follows the rule and suddenly the output is 12. And so that works. What about when we have an input of three? Sure enough, it still followed the same rule, and it got us 10. The idea is it it's, does not matter what number you slide through there. The machine is going to do the same thing to every single number. And the rule is pretty simple. Add 7. Now, there are different uh, machines and generators out there, are different rules, and it could be different for every situation. Um, but uh, just like any other machine, it's designed... Uh, to do one task usually, and it's going to do that task every single time. When we look at these uh, input-output uh, situations, we need to figure out what the rule is, and then we follow that rule every single time. Now, let's take a look at some other scenarios. I have uh, three different um, functions. Uh, we can call them input-output machines if you want. My input is 21, as you can see right here. And the rule is written as x plus 5. Well, remember we said input is the same thing as x. So that's where it came in to, to play that we needed to have that interchangeable. Well, 21 becomes that x. 21 plus 5 is 26. Over here we have a, another um, setup. We're, we're putting through 19. 19 is our input. So 19 plus 5 is 24. And if I put 37 into this machine, 37 is our input, so 37 plus 5 
becomes 42 for our output. Um, here you'll see that we switched back to the function notation and we're not trying to change our idea of uh, an input output machine what we're trying to do is tie it in together so you go oh that's it's very similar um, here we have f of x equals 2 times x minus 3 this is our rule okay we could look at this as our function rule okay all that they're trying to tell you at the beginning is, is hey, um, our input is going to be x. Okay, so this is our input, and here we're saying we're, we're told fill in the table for the function below. Well, here are our inputs. This x is your input. So three, six, and negative two are our inputs. So let's run it through this function generator machine, and I'm actually going to draw it right here just so that we kind of see what I'm talking about. Obviously, there's no machine, but we can kind of pretend. Um, here's our input side. Here's our output side. And I'm going to write this equation, or at least the expression, 2x minus 3 right there and, and call that our rule. Okay. So now, pretend that we've got this 3 right here. It's going to go in. This 3 became the x. So 2 times 3 is 6 and 6 minus 3 is 3 so our output is 3 now imagine that we did that with uh, the number 6 so we get ready to shove the 6 into the machine and it's going to go through this rule 2 times 6 is 12 12 minus 3 is 9 that's our output last one works even for negative numbers hey it works for decimals and fractions but we're not going to worry about that today Negative 2 is our last input. Negative 2 becomes our x. So 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. And negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. So our output is negative 7. We've completely filled in this table for the function below. Uh, we didn't let the function notation bother us. And more importantly, we're still using this idea in our mind of an input-output machine. Um, as you get more and more comfortable uh, with functions and function notation basically as soon as you see that they've given you a list of x's you would go to your equation plug them straight in um, run it through the order of operations and get your new output to finish the table hopefully this helps keep it clear and if you got any questions just email me